Now, we've covered a lot of information about THC, THCV, and THCA. Um, I know that uh, it, we went rather quickly through a lot of them, but they're very powerful. They have a lot of benefits. Let's jump into the first set of questions. Does quantity and quality are tremendous variables in the medical cannabis market? Any suggestions on how to navigate for patients? Well, I think there's two, two things that you need to take a look at. First of all, look at the certificate of analysis. I think we just showed this. It's important to know what the, the potency of the product is, what the product has as far as components, what the terpene profiles are, because this is very important to help you with your particular condition. And then also to realize the cannabinoids that are there for the various, uh, again, for, again, to help you with the various conditions. Besides this, we have a, a video on dosing. Uh, we have one that's, uh, you might want to go to our YouTube channel, Marijuana, uh, YouTube slash Marijuana Aware. And there's a couple of dosing videos that we've done because when you talk about the quality and quantity, this talks about how to calculate the right dosing levels, how to ease into it, going low and going slow, and being able to use that product uh, effectively to address your particular condition. So the answer is, yes, it is. It's something that is very, very important. Uh, I know that a lot of people, when they get their products, they want to just jump right in. And that's something that is, again, it, it, it's exciting to get involved in the cannabis world because it does provide a lot of relief. I know I had a situation where I have seven herniated discs in my neck and when the pain started going away and I started managing it, I got a whole new life back. But I think it's important to also pay attention to, like you mentioned, the quantities because you want to be able to live your life as normal as possible uh, and really not have that high that you get from cannabis that you see in a lot of the recreational markets and, and, and users. Pay attention to the dosing, pay attention to the quantity, and I said, check out our dosing videos and you'll think you'll help you quite a bit. So let's go to the second question that's asked here, which is what are the differences between THCA and THC? Well, first of all, the most important part is that THCA uh, has not been decarboxylated. In other words, it hasn't been converted into THC. What does that mean? That means that many of the medical properties are still there. They're still anti-inflammatory. It's great for being a neuroprotectant. Um, it slows the growth of cancerous cells. It, it's great for uh, a lot of the uh, really difficult, difficult uh, conditions like multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, and, and Parkinson's. It also helps stimulate appetite. Again, you can learn more about, about how all this works in our bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash understanding hyphen cannabis. Now, THC, once you get in, once you get it decarboxylated, is something that does work very effectively, very closely with the CB1 receptors in your body. And what that means is it does have the potential of getting you high. And that's why going low and going slow is important to both find out what your tolerance is to cannabis. And going back to the first question we had uh, a second ago, paying attention to uh, your, your, your right dosing levels, making sure you're getting the medical attention you need, the medical properties you need, but doing it in a way that lets does it so that you have control of your particular situation. Now, what are the main benefits as it morphs from THCA to THC? It now becomes an analgesic. It still has the anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective properties, but it, now it's an antioxidant. It helps with seizures, and it's actually a bronchial inhaler, inhaler. And this is where it opens to a wide range of medical benefits, nausea, muscle specificity. Uh, you'll find it also helps you with insomnia, insomnia post-traumatic stress, stress and anxiety, glaucoma, uh, IBS, and also, again, it stimulates your appetite. So the main difference is I know you get a lot of the medical benefits using THCA versus THC, um, and but there's no reason to shy away from THC. THC has a tremendous medical benefit. Uh, it helps with a lot of people. And again, the only real difference between the two is one has been heated and aged and the other one hasn't. And obviously, as you heat it, age it, or cook it, uh, you'll be able to obviously pull out a little bit more of the medical properties and it'll address more of the medical conditions that are out there. Let's look at the next question that comes up, which is, what is the main difference between CBD and CBN? Now, that's actually a very good question because CBD is something that really helps a lot with your anti-inflammatory. And I want to notice from the chart over here, that CBD has now been decarboxylated. Uh, and what that means is by being heated, it's now turned from CBDA into CBD. And that gives you a lot, a lot of uh, medical benefits. I should point out that it's really known and very famous for being an anti-inflammatory. It helps with seizures, as you know from, we know heard about it from Charlotte's Webb and a number of different people uh, discussing epilepsy, that it's helped with that. Uh, it helps a lot with stress and anxiety. Uh, one of the main reasons why people get involved in cannabis is to address stress and anxiety, and really CBD is a tremendous help to do that. And when you're taking CBD by, by itself, you really want to add a little bit of THC. You want what they call a full spectrum product that has little 0.3% or less THC in it. Because what it does is that little bit of THC activates and puts the CBD molecules on basically, it makes them stronger. And so it really helps with the medical benefits without the high. 
that little bit of THC is usually not going to get people high. Good, it depends on your situation. But very few times do people get high with that little bit of THC, but it does help with your medical properties, especially when you're taking a look at helping with addressing things like, again, muscle specificity, stress and anxiety. It, one of the things it's been shown to do is it helps with opioid addiction, helps people get off of opioids. It does help with in, type 2 diabetes. It does not get rid of it, and it's not a medicine for type 2 diabetes, but it does help you manage type 2 diabetes, primarily bringing, by bringing down your, your blood pressure. It helps with managing a lot of symptoms like ALS, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and also it helps with one of the things that CBD does is it counteracts the high, the high or the psychotropic effects that you find in THC. Now, CBN is a little bit different. Notice that CBN is after THC, and it can more by being aged that's out here, and it still keeps its anti, anti-inflammatory neuroprotectant and antibacterial property. But one of the things that it's been known for quite effectively is to help people with sleep. Uh, that's something that, uh, it's, again, it's been kind of branded and marketed in the market to do that. And it, it also helps stimulate the appetite for a lot of people suffering from a number of conditions that really appetites being uh, suppressed. And by the way, it's not only cachexia or anorexia nervosa, but also it can help with just in general, helping to manage pain and help you being able to put you in a position where you'll be able to get a good night's sleep or be able to relax a little bit. It also helps to delay the onset of ALS and other neuroprotective uh, conditions because of the neuroprotective capability that's there, and it's really good for glaucoma. So there is a number of differences between the two. Uh, both of them are very effective, and in many cases, you'll find a CBD product that's combined with a CBN product. So we've kind of tackled all the questions from pre-webinar, but I do have one anonymous question that came in and it says, um, is it true that marijuana causes cardiac problems? This is a good question. Cannabis itself is an endocannabinoid and that endocannabinoid is distributed in your body through your veins or your blood system. So what happens is when your, your brain says, Houston, we have a problem. Your nervous system will tell you, your brain that you have a problem. What it does is it then goes in and it then triggers and produces endocannabinoids, which are then sent through your bloodstream into that part of your body where you have a particular problem. Knee, legs, uh, stomach, uh, brain, whatever that's there. Now, because it's working very closely with your heart, anytime you have any heart-related issues or conditions or medications, you have to be a little bit careful because Cannabis can get, you can get high quicker. It may not be as effective. What I'm trying to point out is it's important that if you're taking heart, heart medication or if you have a heart condition, really work with your doctor and your medical cannabis doctor because they can give you the right dosing levels for that. Uh, doctors want to know what your patients are taking. A lot of heart doctors understand that it can be, your, your body can be helped using medical cannabis with heart conditions. But again, you have to pay attention to your blood pressure and you have to pay attention to your blood flow. And those are things that your doctors can help you work on. It's not that you can't use it. You sure can. I know a couple of medical patients. He's been doing it for 12 years. So obviously it's something that works very well. But I, again, you work with your doctor, your medical marijuana doctor to be able to help with that. I wouldn't shy away from it, but I would pay attention to it because it's the only area where, where you have to pay attention to the medications where they cross over into the uh, cannabis world. There's one other question that did come up. It says, what's the safest way to smoke and not harm your lungs? I see that question that just popped up. When you're smoking a joint and you roll a joint into that, in that paper and you go to light that joint, that joint is being lit at 550 degrees. That's what the flame is. And what that does is if you notice that chart I gave you on vaping, um, it, it burns off after 450 degrees, it burns off a lot of the cannabinoids, almost all the terpenes, and almost all the, ter all the flavonoids. And what you're doing is you're reducing the efficacy of uh, that joint 50 or 60%. That's the bad news. The good news is it still works, but that's why people smoke more of the joints and the blunts to be able to get the medical cannabis uh, relief they need uh, from for their particular condition, because again, they're cutting down the medical efficacy. My recommendation is to use what they call a dry herb vaporizer or a concentrate. Dryer vaporizers allow you to take the flour, put it into a little container, and it goes into a, a device that allows you to be able to heat the product, steam the product. So now you have a vaping product, not a something that's carcinogen, no burnt material is entering your lungs. And also you now have you can set the temperature on these things. That smoking cannabis really gives you the carcinogens, it gives you the burnt material that's entering your lungs. Naturally, anything that's entering your lungs is something to be careful of. If you're vaping, you're using a steam product, the dryer vaporizers a vape pen, or candidly, the concentrates, uh, you now have a situation where you're now getting the medical benefit. You can control the temperature, so you're going to be able to take advantage of the terpenes, and also you're going to be able to be a lot safer. There is a very safe way of using medical cannabis, and that's use, using dryer vaporizers and concentrates. And I hope that really answers your question. Uh, and if not, please let me know. Send, send me an email, 
at events at marijuanaaware.com and you'll be able to get you some information and more information about this. If there's any other questions that are coming up, please let us know. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. I know we've gone through a lot of things very quickly, provided a lot of data. After this webinar, what you're going to find is you'll get an email from us that'll outline, it'll give you a link to a, our YouTube channel, which will have a copy of this video. You'll have a question, you'll have the presentation in a flipbook format. We're going to give you information on, on discounts and information about our sponsor, which is AIR. And I should want to, and which I want to do is I want to thank the air dispensaries for not only sponsoring this, but also helping us with some of the products and helping us find some of the information we need to be able to put this on. We really appreciate their, their efforts that are out there. Um, I also want to point out, if you want to get a medical marijuana card, my recommendation is to go to Medical Marijuana Tr Clinics of Florida, mmtcfl.com. They can help you not only get a card, but they do a great job of walking you through the medical cannabis journey the first six months after you, after you have your journey, be able to provide you the, the assistance and the information you need to really help you get your life back. And naturally, when it comes to medical marijuana patient information, these webinars, which are coming up next week, we're doing one on CBD, CBDA, and CBDV. And then also, don't forget, our YouTube channel, Marijuana Aware. It's something where not only do we have webinars from the past, Q&As from the past, but we also have a lot of information that's out there. So I thank everybody for joining us. This is important. Cannabis is something that's personalized. It's something that can help you quite a bit with your particular medical condition. And we really want you to be able to get the use of it, get the benefits of the use of it to address that condition and really help you get your life back. And we look forward to having you join us next week.